Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're talking all things Hibiclans. I've gotten a lot of requests over the years. Please, please, please talk about Hibiclans. Can I use Hibiclans for body odor? Does Hibiclans work for acne? We're gonna get into it in today's video. First of all, what the heck is Hibiclans? It is an over-the-counter antiseptic that contains chlorhexidine at 4% strength. Chlorhexidine is an antiseptic widely used in medicine, especially in the hospital, but it's also found in a variety of hygiene products. Dentists use it a lot. But it is used uh, for a variety of dental issues, which we're not gonna get into in today's video because I'm not a dentist, I'm a dermatologist. Why is chlorhexidine so widely used in medicine? It's a broad spectrum antimicrobial. What the heck does that mean? It can target and destroy a lot of pesky critters. Bacteria, namely gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, fungus, yeast, certain viruses and destroy them. The way that this compound works is it actually binds to the proteins either in your skin or in your mucosa and it sticks there. And this is desirable because it provides immediate and sustained antiseptic activity with little to no systemic absorption, meaning it just kind of sticks there and doesn't go throughout your body. And it can provide antimicrobial activity for up to 24 hours. How does chlorhexidine work to target bacteria? It does this by binding phosphates and certain proteins in the bacterial cell wall, makes the bacteria super duper leaky, so stuff just kind of leaks out and the bacteria <laughs> aren't too happy. Then chlorhexidine can enter into the bacteria and precipitate uh, something called ATP, which is the energy currency for that bacterial cell, as well as nucleic acid. So basically it goes in there and, and, and starts wreaking havoc. So chlorhexidine is used as an antiseptic. An antiseptic is something that it can be applied to the skin or the mucosal membrane to reduce the risk of infection. It's going to lower the burden of microbes on the surface so that if there is a cut or some sort of problem, it reduces the risk that you will develop an infection. Hibiclans, aka chlorhexidine, is not a treatment for an active infection, but rather is used preventatively. It's frequently used around surgery. So your surgeon may instruct you to bathe with Hibiclans prior to surgery, the idea being that perhaps it may help in cutting down on surgical site infections. In the medical setting, chlorhexidine is often used as a hand disinfectant, like prior to surgery, for example. Now, that being said, it's frequently advertised and touted as a hand wash, but should you really be using chlorhexidine as a hand wash? So while it's a great thing to disinfect the hands prior to surgery, I have my reservations, however, with using chlorhexidine, aka hibiclans, as an everyday hand wash, because we know that for the purposes of hand hygiene to reduce the transmission of infectious organisms that cause people to get sick, colds and flus for example, that you don't need an antimicrobial agent to do that. Simply soap and water, lathering your hands together gets the job done effectively provided that you lather to all surfaces and you rub the hands together for a sufficient amount of time. The amount of time is roughly the amount of time it would take you to sing the alphabet. The use of antibacterial hand soaps is discouraged due to the risk of emergence of antibiotic resistant uh, bugs. You also have to consider the fact that for the purposes of your day-to-day -day life, you have bacteria on your skin that are beneficial, good, good bacteria. Chlorhexidine is not necessarily going to discriminate against the good and bad bacteria per se. So by doing this all the time, you certainly can overdo it in terms of the uh, healthy microbiome on your skin. I'm not a huge fan of using chlorhexidine for the everyday purpose of hand hygiene for that reason. You can get away with soap and water. It does the job for preventing the transmission of infectious organisms that make us sick. Um, and, and that's what's recommended. If you don't have access to soap and water, the next best thing is going to be an alcohol-based hand sanitizer as opposed to chlorhexidine where it is just a, because it's such a broad spectrum antimicrobial, you really have to start questioning the utility of that for just the purposes of day-to-day -day hand hygiene and ba balancing the benefits and risks. It's also popularly touted for body odor. And I've kind of pointed this out in a lot of my other videos regarding body odor. Um, the reason you have body odor is because sweat gets broken down by bacteria on the, that live on the skin. And things that reduce the burden of bacteria, particularly in the underarm area, can ultimately really help you out a lot in cutting down on body odor. So people frequently try 
try out Hibiclans and it certainly can help. Recently I did a video on painful body pimples. A lot of people think this is acne, but it's not actually acne. Rather, it is a folliculitis. Folliculitis is inflammation around the hair follicle, typically related to a little infection. One of the most common reasons for recurrent folliculitis is staph bacteria, painful breakouts. So check out my video on painful pimples. I go into detail about the habits that lead to recurrences of these painful pimples, AKA folliculitis. But for people who deal with this, a strategy is to utilize chlorhexidine as a body wash a few times a week at most to decolonize the staph bacteria on the skin surface that are causing those recurrences. Uh, so it certainly can help in that situation. Another situation where chlorhexidine washes are super helpful is for people who have hydradenitis superativa. Hydradenitis superativa is a chronic skin condition where the individual develops boils, usually under the arms, under the breasts, in the groin area, on the buttocks. These boils start coalescing together to form what's called a sinus tract. They're very painful, they drain fluid, and that fluid can become malodorous. And for people with hydradenitis superativa, those skin lesions, the sinus tracts, they can become colonized and a biofilm of bacteria can form on the sinus tracts, further fueling the skin disease and making it worse for them. So routine use of antiseptics on these areas can definitely help people out a lot who have hydratus, hydradenitis superativa by cutting down on the bacteria that contribute to flares of their skin problem. What about for acne? Hibiclens, aka chlorhexidine, is not routinely used at all to treat acne. It is not an acne treatment. You won't find it recommended in any acne treatment guideline. A lot of people firmly believe that acne is a hygiene issue, when in reality it's not that. It, it involves a few things. Yes, it involves bacteria, namely cutibacterium acne in the pore. It involves the differentiation of the cells lining the pore, kind of getting stuck together and making a comedone. It involves sebum, and sebum production is governed by genetics and hormones. And so just using antiseptics, sure, it may help reduce cutibacterium acnes that contribute to breakouts, but it's not gonna address the whole thing. A another ingredient that targets cutibacterium acnes quite well, actually, is benzoyl peroxide. And research has compared benzoyl peroxide 5% to chlorhexidine um, for acne. And both are equally effective at improving acne, at least within the span that the study looked at. The advantage of benzoyl peroxide for acne is that it does not come with that risk of bacterial resistance which is something we're trying to avoid. Whereas chlorhexidine, it's possible that that could occur. And there's evidence that that, that is occurring and something we need to be mindful of. People who have atopic dermatitis, AKA eczema, I've mentioned this in other videos before, but their skin frequently becomes colonized with staph bacteria that further worsen their skin disease. So a common approach actually for patients with atopic dermatitis is to recommend a bleach bath. I know it sounds wild, but it helps remove some of that excess staph. And in some patients, it can help cut down on their disease flares and disease severity. I have a video as a side note all about the bleach bath. Definitely check that one out. The research, however, is not quite there for Hibiclens. And again, with Hibiclens, you do have that risk potentially of favoring the emergence of resistant organisms. Is Hibiclens safe? When used as directed, it certainly is a safe safe thing, and it's obviously widely used in medicine. What are the risks of using Hibiclens to the skin? One risk, as with anything that you put on your skin, is allergic contact dermatitis. Allergic contact dermatitis, so you develop an allergy to it. It's called a type four hypersensitivity. The risk of this is actually pretty low in healthcare workers who are constantly being exposed to chlorhexidine. In the dermatology clinics scenario, which is not quite reflective of of, of real world, right? Dermatology clinic is everybody who's got a skin problem, right? Not everybody who doesn't have one. Uh, so in the dermatology clinic setting, the incidence of allergic contact dermatitis to chlorhexidine is around 1%. So not like super, super common, but definitely something that can happen. More common in people who are using it to mucosal surfaces, like inside the mouth. Allergic contact dermatitis is a type four hypersensitivity, but another type of allergy is anaphylaxis. You can develop anaphylaxis 
uh, to chlorhexidine. It definitely happens. It's, it's not super common, but it has happened it's so much so that the FDA at one point issued a warning to let people know that this can happen for some people. They just develop an allergy to it. One of the main risks that um, we always have to keep in mind about Hibiclons is if it gets in your ear, it can, it can be very damaging. There have been cases where Hibiclans or chlorhexidine has been used as a disinfectant around the ear prior to uh, ENT surgery and actually got in the ear, damaged the ear. Chlorhexidine can also be very damaging to your eye if it gets in your eye. It can be very uh, damaging to, to the cornea. If you're gonna be using chlorhexidine as an antiseptic, we're gonna be really, really careful to you know not get it near the ear or near the eyes. And I've already alluded to this, but an overarching concern with overuse of chlorhexidine, inappropriate use, is that eventually it may favor the emergence of bugs, whether it be bacteria, fungus, viruses, yeast, uh, that are resistant to it. Um, as it stands now, it's not like a widespread issue. There is research suggesting that emergence of resistance to chlorhexidine is a real thing. If you're going to use Hibiclens, I would caution uh, to not use it basically above the neck. Don't use it in the mucosal areas, like in your mouth or in the genital area. So how do you use Hibiclens? In the shower, go ahead and shampoo your hair with your regular shampoo, condition with your regular conditioner, rinse that out. Wash your face with your regular face wash, uh, rinse that off, and then step out from under the water or turn the water off, take some of the Hibiclens and either put it in your hand or put it in a washcloth, a clean washcloth. And then you're going to lather it to the body from the neck down, avoiding the genital area. Again, don't get it on your face. Don't get it around your ears, nose, mouth, any of those mucosal surfaces. Avoid getting it near your eye. And then you can rinse it off. I don't recommend using it more than two times a week. Um, now, if you wanted to use it for body odor just under the arms, I would do something similar, but just direct it to the underarm area. You can use it on the bottom of your feet. You may find if you're someone who deals with smelly feet, foot malodor, that that really helps as well because it's gonna cut down on the bacteria on the bottoms of the feet that break down sweat and contribute to foot odor. Um, and it may, through its antifungal properties, help cut down on foot fungus, although it's not a, um, it's not a treatment for foot fungus and there's not really research showing it as a effective way to prevent uh, foot fungus, namely dermatophytes. Um, so that's how to use it. You know, you wanna be careful not to get it around your eyes, in your nose, your mouth. All right, y'all. So that's what I wanted to share with you about Hibiclens, aka chlorhexidine, a very effective broad spectrum antiseptic, but we should be a little conservative and not just use it hither, thither, and yon for every little thing under the sun. Uh, you know, basic hand washing with just soap and water gets the job done as far as hand hygiene. Um, you know, it's not a treatment for acne. It can be helpful though for hydradenitis suppurativa. It can be helpful for recurrent uh, uh, staph infections, recurrent folliculitis related to staph. Definitely can be helpful there, but you still wanna be conservative with the frequency of use. You may find it's beneficial for body odor, but I would encourage you to lean in more towards benzoyl peroxide does the same thing, but you don't have to worry about the emergence of resistant microorganisms, which is a possibility with chlorhexidine, although not a common issue, something that we definitely need to keep in mind. Speaking of resistant microorganisms, on the end slate, I'm going to link a video where I talk all about a um, resistant ringworm that is now in the US. So you need to watch that. So you are familiar with this new to the US, it's been in other countries for a while, uh, type of ringworm that is very stubborn to treat. So definitely check that one out next. You learn a little bit more about uh, you know, the consequences of the emergence of superbugs, including fungus. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.